Okay. So, uh, yeah, so we will start by setting up by downloading Python first. So you can actually use the links below. Uh, and you can find the Python documentation here. And you can also follow, uh, go to python.org and download Python for your respective operating system. And yeah, so after you say, uh, if you are using Linux, you can just uh, run the following commands. So after that, you can just install Python with the respective version you want. So for example, if you, if you want 3.11, you can just uh, run this command and install Python 3.11. And after that, you can just test if if it's uh, installed or if it's available in your environment variables by typing Python. Mm. And if you, if you are on Windows, uh, you can just follow the follow the instructions in the documentation in the official Python documentation. And also, if you are on Mac, you can just use this link. And after installing, you, you need to set as for Python, so which, which makes it available throughout so your know, command line. Or, for example, if you are on Windows, it, it will be available in, uh, in in a command prompt that is open in a folder structure. And so the path is stored uh, in an environment variable, so which means that anything that's stored in that environment variable with, it, with its attached as will be run. So, for example, if, you, if your Python is stored for, uh, in your operating system, for example, if you are on Linux, it, it might be in uh, inside users slash bin, or it might be in local slash any directory. So, you can attach that and you can use, <coughs> you can call Python for any other terminal or command, command mode. And so if you are in Linux, you can set up uh, by by typing type export as is quite to, for example, as I have mentioned, it, it might be in user local slash p slash Python. So it will be, uh, this path will be exported and it will be available. And also if you are on Windows, you can type uh, type as and you can just follow. Uh, this command and it will be available in your, uh, in your environment variables. And also, there is another way to add if, in Windows. I, I'm not using Windows, so I, 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 I won't be able to show you that. But you can add manually using uh, after right clicking on, on your, my computer. And after that, you can follow some instructions. It will be it's available in the official documentation. And after installing Python, uh, the next step is to create a virtual environment. So virtual environments are considered as disposable and used to contain specific Python interpreters. So for example, you can create Python virtual environment specifically for Python 3.7 or specifically for Python 3.10 or 11 and so on. And it is contained in the directory you just specified. So for example, if you are creating the new Documents directory, the virtual environment directory will be considered. Contain the, the Python environment will be contained in that directory, and it's not suggested to move it uh, into another directory or copy and give some of this. Okay. Um, and so moving on, moving on to. Uh, the commands. So, if you are on Windows, you just type MD to create a folder. And if you are on Linux, you just use uh, MKDIR, which is make directory. And after CD or changing directory to that particular folder just created, just type the following command. So, Python 3 and your environment name being my VM. And you can use the package called VM. There are many ways to create uh, an uh, virtual environment in Python, but this is the simplest option. 
So after that, you can activate it. You activate it by running the activate.patch file. If you are on Windows, and you can just uh, use source and following that, following your environment name slash bin slash activate on Linux. And after that, you will see it is activated and and deactivating will be just by running the deactivate.patch file for Windows and just typing deactivate for Linux. And if you are, if you are using an Anaconda, which is another package for Python, you can uh, follow the instructions in the link. And after, the, after installing Anaconda, you can just check if Conda is installed or not by typing Conda dash D. And after that, you, you can update your Conda and you can create a in an environment using the following command. So using Conda will be uh, useful if you have, if you want to use different Python uh, versions. So for example, x.x represents different Python versions. So for example, if you want to use 3.5, you can just specify 3.5. And after that, you just type Conda activate and run name. And next will be uh, to install a package. So if you want to install a package, you just uh, so for example, in, if you are using VM, you just have to use the default one, which is pip install or pip stream install. But in Conda case, uh, you just type Conda install. And so this will be how to set up any a Python environment in your local machine. And also, if you are using server, that's okay too. But this is how you set it. So now, moving on to Git and GitHub, I, I assume you, you guys already have a GitHub account. So just to introduce what Git is, so it is a distributed version control system used for tracking changes and in source code in software development. So allowing multiple developers to work on the same projects. So we can actually track and uh track who would who actually makes change and what were what were the changes made by that particular person and we can track that so it is somehow uh you, you have to be familiar with it in order to be an, an effective and efficient developer so some of the, some of the key concepts in git are repository commits and commit branch and merge so repository is it's it's commonly called a repo, which is a collection of files and folders with a revision story. So, which means you can actually track your version or your revision history in, in that repo. So, it, it's just kind of collection of folders and files. And commit is a snapshot of change. So, for example, if you actually made a change uh, in a particular file, you can commit it, which means snapshot is taken at a particular time. And with a, a unique identifier or a hash will be created for each commit. And branches are branches allow developer to work on separate feature or work without actually affecting the main code. So, like for example, you can just add some feature and uh, some feature in another branch and merge it later on right? when you want to actually. Yeah. Apply all chains in the in the main part. So merge means, as I've explained, now uh, it just combining chains from one part to into another. So making chains, uh, as I've mentioned, you just uh, type git status, and after that you will see your chains, and you use git add to stage your chains. So stage means all all of the chains are, are ready to be committed. And after that, you will just commit and uh, write your message. So you can actually check uh, some of the references here. So I'll just uh, give you a quick demo for, for uh, it and uh, CI/CD or continuous integration and continuous development for continuous deployment using Git. And of this. Let me just stop sharing the slide and let's move on. But if you have any questions till this point, 
Facebook and as we know. Okay, so I assume uh, that you have some understanding. Uh, uh, I know it's a simple concept, but and it's just an intro. So I'll just move on to uh, okay. Uh, we can hear you, right? I think. Okay, for uh, for the updating paths on Windows, uh, there are a few resources out there. So we just, I think, if I remember well, just uh, add in the Python paths in, in the environment. Or you, there is an option in the checkbox while we install in Python. You can actually uh, mark, uh, so it will if the environment variable will be edited, and the Python path will be added into your environment variables. So it will be available throughout any command line. There is a checkbox, which is I think add into add path or modify path. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, I'll start by, actually, okay, let me just share my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in, I'm, I'm using uh, Linux, so uh, you can see my screen, right? So, for uh, that, we can actually, let's just uh, create a new folder or control a repo, but let's just show you to create. So, let me just change my directory into documents and I will create a uh, directory called, let's just say, Python uh, CICD, and I'll just CD into it. And after that, I'm using Python 3, so I'm just use uh, minus M is just you're calling or you're referring to a specific package. In this case, I am referring to the BM package, and I'll just call my environment as my VM. So after that, I'll just, if I list all the directories, as you can see, just let me zoom in a little bit. So it will be visible. Okay, so. As you can see here, uh, I can activate it now by just typing source my bin and activate. So as you can see, uh, now uh, my environment variable is activated. So now let me just uh, create a new repo and let's just clone it. So as you can see here, I'll just call it same as Python CLCT and it will be public and it will be just an, an empty repo. So, as you can see, GitHub will actually show me an instruction after cloning it or creating it. 
from scratch. So, for example, I can just do, I, I, I want to echo this one to my readme to do MD, which means result means I'm, I'm outputting some project CICD text into my into an readme to MD. So, if I ls and you can see here, so let me just for simplicity still case. Uh, let me just open it in this code. So as you can see here, this is a good thing. So next uh, next step will be to initialize a git into that specific directory. So I'll just type git in it. First, I'll open my terminal in this specific directory. So as you can see here, if I print the working directory, you can see here um, the right code. So I'll just add git in it, which initialize, a, initialize an empty git repository. So I, after that, I'll just add my readme file, or can just copy and paste all of it, but I will explain what each line does. So this will, as, a, a, as specified in the slide, this will create a staging. The readme.md will be added to the staging element. So you can see here, you can add it. So if I add git status, my VM is not staged, but this one is staged. So while I come, I, while I'm committing, the staged will be added to the commit. So for you, and I want I don't want to push this environment folder, which means as I, as I explained earlier, it's not supposed to be moved or shaped or copied. So I'll just create a git ignore file. So in Linux, I'll just type touch git ignore and I will add slash my VM and if I say git status as you can see here there, there is no more my VM because it is ignored so and after that I will just add my git ignore file and let's just follow the instruction and again so I'll just write a comment, which means my first comment will be this, and as you can see, it will, it's actually written, and this is the the root the, the master commit, and I'll just can check the branches. I, I'm just I I just have the master branch, so I'll, I'll, by default it's on master branch if you are if you are using Git in it. But it will be main if you are creating a repository using Git, uh, using GitHub. So I will just ch check out. So check out minus e means create a new branch and name it main. Now if I check Git branch, it will be my the green one is main, so which means I'm working on main. So let's just get back to the instruction and we will add a remote so now a remote is so you can have multiple remotes so for example if you have uh, multiple repositories but working on the same book file you can uh, add five linears uh, remote or remote uh, sources as you want. so i'll just add an origin for now which means so now we can remote and I start and you can actually see the uh, get URL will show me get URL all will show me all of the the okay then it just specify origin so it will be shown as as you can see here this is my repository actual github repository link and after that if you follow the instruction we just use origin and if we have so another big mode that's how we push 
it's so by specifying another name so we just have origin for now so just me now as you can see if i reload this page or to check it it will be added read me and the end it's ignored or added so and the end is uh actually uh, triggered here so if you can also check it it will it's the same read me and this so just cancel this and now we actually created a Edit uh, GitHub repository and also we have edit, we post create some files. So, uh, if you have any question till now, you can ask me and I will just move on to the next part, which is continuous integration tests. And will help you check uh, if tests have passed in the GitHub and also in your local file. Yeah. Can type in the chat or can't speak. Okay, so for Dabo's question, if we proceed without creating an environment variable, I mean environment, we will have. Uh, we, we might face conflicts for, and also we might face version mismatch. So, for example, for one project, you are using a certain version of some package, and it's compatible with that. And also for the another project, you are using another version. So maintaining that would be uh, inefficient. So you create an isolated, an isolated environment. So you can actually use any versions you want, and also. Uh, the developing project seamlessly, and yeah, git, git ignore is mandatory. You can actually, you must actually create. So, for example, you might have some secrets and also uh, environment environment folders and data folders that that cannot be pushed to GitHub. So that's how you you remove uh, tracking for those folders. You should use git ignore. And the recording will be actually shared with you guys later. Ah, uh, yeah, that's actually the, the that's the suggested part. You should create an environment variable for every project you are working on, even if it's if it's a, a print statement. You should use an environment. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's, let's move on to the next part of the tutorial. Okay. Uh, uh, so now let's just create a folder, the tests folder. So let me create another file for the keyword. Now I'll just use this one for a test purpose. I hope it's visible. It's visible, right? So, so after that, just so let's just create a function called main main dot pi, and you just print hello and just. And if we are running it in the terminal, we will just so which means main means well, I'm I'm using uh I'm running it from terminal. So it's just so to check let's just run it. Right? Let me just 
activate my environment and our Python. And as you can see, it's just displays hello world. Now let's just create a test folder, test.py. Let's go to one. And now we will import our main. And we will import unit test, which is which is used for testing purposes in Python. So it's in test and we will create a class inheriting form. Uh, let's just call it test me and as you can see in the Intel sense, it's just suggesting I use test case. So now I can create another function here. Let's just call it test me. And I'm, I'm just calling it the equal and I want to check if this print hello world. And after that, um, if, if the assertion is successful, it will, it will not throw in an error. So uh, it's just write a print statement here. Test ask and and while running it for terminal, we will, as I mentioned, the test. We will code the uh, so I will just test test it so Python and to run a test file should in a test test slash test dot pi. So we have a thing. So now none is so it's it's not written in anything. So it's just rather than printing it, it's just printed and return something. Now let's just check if the test is successful. So now it doesn't matter, so just cross the other comma. So now test actually we have, we have test at last. So now we 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 wrote our first test file and we will create another uh, tool. We will create a workflow or a GitHub option in this case, and we will just create a new folder, a new folder in our not in the test file, but in the in our root directory. We will call it dot GitHub. It's a hidden file which, because it's a it is executed by GitHub, and inside it we will create another folder which is work goals which will execute it by GitHub. And in, in that file, let's just create some file we want. So, for example, let's just call it CICT.YML. Let's just see how it is. And now we write our test. So, let's just give it a name. So, uh, the name is we want is CI stuff. CT. And now we, we will specify as you as you can see in the intelligence, it's suggesting me on push, so which means when it's push when it's push on specific branches. So for example, we want branches. Yeah. And if you want a pull request to include pull request to screen, you include it here. So when there is only when there when there is a push in the in the main branch, we will always have uh, we will execute this YAML file. So which means let's just jobs and now we will specify the build. Now run on you we will specify uh, an operating system. So run on run on. Ubuntu slash latest. So now 
we were specifying the dimension that we wanted for running. So, and next we will specify the steps. So our first step is we will give it a name. So let's just call it checkout and it's about that version and we will specify uh, Python versions and also it's just use our tool and Python and we will use we will specify Python version so we want Python three point we can specify here three point is just to use the latest three point so the latest three point nine three point ten or any version. Now we give it an, another name. So the first is to actually install the dependencies, which means if we have uh, requirements for txt file which we don't have now, we will run that. We will just restart it first, and after that, we you install all the requirements, and we will run all this. This will actually run all the unit tests. So, if you have just stop and try it, and you just try to run any test files for it. But what we want is and we, since we have in the test folder, we will switch project. And if we want all the, now we can see here. Oh. So we have to specify test keyword. And now, since we only only have one test, we can see here. And now, we, have, we completed our first uh, test file. And, we, as, and let, let me just show you how to include your package in your uh, requirement file. So, for example, let's just click and install pandas. We, we, we won't use pandas for now, but let me just show you how to write this one. Yeah. So it is just taking away. And so now we can, please will show us all the installed packages in our system. So now you can see NumPy, Pandas, Python, DTTL. I am it and six and tz data are installed. So now we can write this to another requirement file. So we can just this uh, the greater than sign means actually we are uh, directing the output from this into another file. So create requirements and txt. Now, if I say git status, you can see here we have dot github main dot file and all the created files. Now we will remove the cache file. We will write it here. First. I should be wanted to remove. So now we can. Since the git status is not there, so now we will add git add all. Or so every change in current directory will that don't represent that one. So now it's all the changes are still, so we just commit it. Now let me just change, I will change the branch after I commit. So in your commit file be uh, be descriptive as much as you can. And now the commit so I just 
check out. So I'll just push origin and see so I'll just let me share my share the folder and show you. Okay, I'm sorry. So is it better now? Okay, uh, let me just share my screen. Mm. Okay, so now as you can see, I have another another change. So I will just create a pull request for that. So now I'm creating a pull request from branch CI and of course CD into main, which is and as you can see here, this is a commit as the pull requested and you can change it and make sure to write a brief description here so i'll just write the first thing i did was created and installed pandas now create a pull request, and if if it, if it can be if it can be merged for with main, you can you will see a message will be if merge pull request. But if not, it will show you the, all the conflicts, and you have to actually resolve the conflicts. So um, just call me, um, merge it, which 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 will create an, a trigger for the action. Now, as you can see here, let me just make a few changes here and repeat it. So, since it's not a push to me, and change just trigger the test. Make a few changes here. Um, maybe just Now, as you can see here, the three commits will be actually changed to five commits. And I just want to trigger it. Uh, I hope it triggers. Let me just uh, recheck. Okay, so the, my mistake was I uh, I named the file the workflow with no S, so let me just rename it quick. Thank you. 
Oh, that was a mistake. Wait, let me just show you quick. So, can you hear me now? Maybe I think my voice is not that clear. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now clearly? Just type in the chat. Okay. Okay, sorry for the background noise. Okay, as you can see here, now we have the check, uh, test. So the issue was I, I named this file. As you can see here in the commit history, I named the folder, it just, just work from. So I change it to workflows. Now it just triggers the unit test we wrote. So now we can see here all the how the build went and you can see and the uh, run test was successful install dependencies set up right and check out and as you can see all the jobs are uh, completed successfully as you can see here uh, now pandas is installed and after that hello world was printed and test pass was printed so this is how you write uh, you write uh, an integration test so which means now uh, all the tests should be passed so for example if there is a it will be not successful and you have to write tests for for all your functions especially unit tests and uh, now the next step would be unit continuous deployment but in case of continuous deployment you have set up something to deploy and that just which means is you just execute uh, some deployment script so for example you want you you copy this directory for example you have a build directory in your uh, in your repository and you just want to move that to some server so that will be your deployment script and you just run that script as you run as you run this in the same way as you run the test file and you can just check out more resources if you want to dig more so now let's just uh, if you have, if you have any question, uh, you can ask me now, and we will move on to the next part of the story. Okay. Any question? Okay, but like it doesn't have anything. It's just have uh, uh, the test scripts. And... Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Conda will actually uh, will give you more advantage if you are using Conda because in in the, in the regular Jupyter environment is not installed by default, so you have to install it. But if you are using Conda, it's it will. Uh, it will have it by default and you will have more more package reinstalled but it's it's your choice but i i would i suggest you use conda for this one at least and after testing both sides you will choose efficiently So, any other question? Okay, I'll just uh, uh, I'll shift and okay. Uh, let me just drop a quick link. So the unit test link you can actually uh, see and play around with it. Let me just drop it in the chat. So this this is the official documentation for the unit test library, and you can uh, check it. And it, it has uh, a nice documentation. You know, just dig 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 through it. 
Okay, now we will move on to our next topic. I hope it's uh, it's clear till now. And if you, if you have any questions, you can just drop it in the chat and I'll flash back. Let me just share the slide. So now we will move on to project planning and ETA, so which means data science, data science workflow. So now we will just crisp crisp TM stands for cross industry standard process for data mining. So for example, uh, uh, I think. Uh, if you have a computer science background or software engineering background, you, you know the uh, software development uh, methodology. So, for example, you have uh, you 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 actually gather uh, requirements, you and you you come up with functional requirements, non-functional requirements. You come um, also you design a use case and you design models and you design classes so that's and you have uh, some other, so for example the, the most popular one are uh, waterfall and uh, agile so those are methodologies so for then this is the but in data mining or in data analysis case we don't have that actually phases or methodologies. So crisp DM is if by following crisp DM we will have uh, we will have distinct phases in each step and we will know what to do in each step. So we can we can treat it as a methodology by actually well, we can apply a waterfall of uh, agile methodology in this we can just we, the the phases are different from the software development. So you gather an, an a functional requirement and non-functional requirements, but in this case, you gather you gather business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, and evaluation. So let's just uh, go through each. I think it's better if I make it a slide. So in and uh, business understanding, we define the problem or questions that needs to be addressed. So for example, what are we trying to answer? And what are the questions we actually, under we, we will try to understand each of the points here. And we will try to understand business objects and how data science can contribute to achieve, to achieve those, those objectives. So, uh, and also we will identify stakeholders and the requirements so what 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 do the stakeholders want and so stakeholders are for example can be business owners so what does the business owner want so what can we give it how can we apply a data science methodologies and data science approach to solve that uh, requirements and also objectives so in the data understanding we gather the necessary data the first step is to gather the necessary data and after that we explore the structure so content and quality and we document initial findings and insights and the next step is potential issues to identify potential issues such as missing values outliers and data inconsistency so in case of this we actually have to consult with some some industry experts so for example we are working on uh, we are gathering images to analyze so for example for uh, breast cancer or lung cancer so those images has to be first we ask we have to understand those images by consulting uh, an industry expert so because that we can actually interpret the data correctly and the next will be prepare the data so now we now we gather the data and we understand how to actually understand the data and now the next step is to prepare the data and in that step so we clean the data handling missing values outliers and inconsistencies and we perform data transformation such as normalization and or standard standardization so normalization is just uh, we will treat each values as 
uh, the maximum it will mostly it's soft soft max which means the minimum and maximum is zero and one respectively so we normalize the values in, in the in certain so for example let's say we have five zero five and ten in our data so zero will be treated as zero while we normalize and five will be treated as 0 0.5 and 10 will be treated as around one which is which meaning 10 10 being the maximum and five being the media and so next will be uh, to future well, to engineer features to create new variables and also for example let's say we need some average values to create some predictive model so we create another features. So features mean, meaning in machine learning, it's uh, yeah, a, some variables that that we can actually use to make to to make the machine learning model learn more and also to represent the things we wanted to predict more. And we split our data into training, validation, and testing sets. And the next would be perform EDA. So explore, exploratory data analysis. So we perform univariate analysis to understand distribution of individual variables. So univariate meaning we are trying to understand a single the a single feature. So which means uh, which means uh, now we are actually. So for example, I will just show you in a demo how univariate analysis works. So we are just uh, doing some statistical analysis. So for example, we are trying to find the mean, the median, the max, or the range. It, it, it can be different. And, by, and the next step is to conduct bivariate analysis. So which means we are trying to explore the relationship between variables. So for example, we have, let's say we have, we are predicting the a person to have some disease and we have an age. So the outcome or that person having the particular disease so for example lung cancer so that person having lung cancer or the probability of that person being uh, having lung having lung cancer and we have h so we actually try to explore the relationship so for example let's say as age grows do do more persons have uh, then cancer we can explore in that way and we visualize data using histograms scatter plots box plots so most of the uh, plots or visualizations are for bivariate analysis so you can't actually it's not uh, uh, correct to you to visualize a univariate analysis so because we doesn't have any other uh, variable to compare it with other than itself and now we identify correlation between variables so what is the, pro the probability of something to increase if one of the variables increase which what is the probability between that or what is the relationship between variables and we perform some statistical tests to validate assumption and hypothesis if we have uh, an initial hypothesis and assumptions now we move on our next step is to move on to modeling so we identify our problem so we will try to identify what algorithm is efficient to solve that problem and we after identifying that we will train our model and we evaluate models performance and we will try fine-tune parameters to optimize the performance and we validate the model again and after that we will try to evaluate as i mentioned we will go to evaluation so let's just say we trying to assess the performance of the model and uh, based on the objective and we will validate the accuracy the precision the record f1 score and other relevant metrics and after that we interpret the results based on the objectives we want to achieve and after that, it's the next stage is deployment. And uh, while deploying, we integrate the model into a production environment and develop a plan to for monitoring the model's performance and provide documentation and establish procedures for 
model maintenance and update. So the model might have some issues or bug, we maintain it and update it. So we, we actually have to establish some procedures for that. And the next step is iteration. So iteration will be like gathering feedback from stakeholders and in users and looking back to the first step, or we might just uh, jump to modeling if all the previous steps are correct or good. So we will go in this step. So now uh, let's just uh, explore the data that was shared with you guys and let's just uh, see how EDA is, uh, how EDA works. And in, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask me now. And also, yeah, uh, thank you, Vilu uh, Slashi, for sharing the starter network analysis. So you have the, some some test file in there too, so you can use that as a reference. Any question? Okay. 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 So, uh, now we will I'll just uh, show you a short demo. So I'm in Google Colab. So for those of you who don't know, it's a Colab. You can uh, create Python notebooks in the in the Google. And it's free. So and also it has uh, a fine resource, so you can use it. And after that, you might uh, just uh, create a new collab and so uh, we uh, now we mount our drive so which means we are trying to read some file from which is uh, stored in our drive so we have to mount our drive which means uh, we will have access to that drive and let me just zoom in if, if it's not visible and so now after that we import uh, we import pandas and the next step is to uh, read the file. So my uh, the the CSV file was stored in this directory or in this file. So now we can actually after reading the file, we can see the name the name here. So you have article ID, source ID, source name as it was introduced in the challenge introduction and after that we use df.head which means that df is our data file and as that data frame and we use df.head just to see the top five or the first five entries so we have article id source id source name author title description url url to image and all the columns are here and you can actually see the Along, along with the uh, values. And the next step is to just run df.info to, to see what are uh, like all the list of columns and also with the uh, none null count and also with the data type too. And after that, we will just have, uh, as you can see, article ID has uh, around 58,000 and most of the Source, uh, source ID are present, but uh, we have null values, and we can check here uh, how many were missing values. So, in the article ID, you can hear, you can see all no value is missing since it's zero, and the source ID we have around forty thousand missing values, and outer. So, the good thing is, uh, most of the values are not missing in the relevant column. So for example, in the source name, we don't have any 
missing values so we are good to go since we are we need the source and also we need the title so there is no new set line without a title so either we have to drop it or or uh, not use it actually we don't if, if our objective is to use the title and title can't be null so we can I shall check the end URL to image. It's not relevant for our use case. In the category, we can drop these 21 uh, in records since we category is somehow required in our case. And now we explore the categories. So, for example, let's just explore categories. So, we can list all the unique values in that uh, category. And we can actually check the links here. But yeah, so can check value counts also value counts will give us all the entry counts so for example for category stock we have around 3687 for canada we have uh, 2066 and for health okay. and also for technology and also. Okay. so and let's just explore the text columns and uh let's just see uh text links so what is the average text link so this is by univariate analysis it's just for for example what is the standard deviation what is the minimum as uh, a 25th percentile the 50th percentile and also what is the max so for title we have three uh, 326 characters as max and the minimum is 12 characters so you don't have a uh, like below that and also we don't have any title above standard and 26 and like we can check for content links too so as explained earlier i think content is trimmed around 200 characters so the mean is around uh 207 and the minimum is 25 and this is just univariate analysis and the sentiment we can actually describe it and the value counts, you can check sentiments. Will be. Most of the sentiments are neutral and around 6,000 are feedback. And now we can just go back, go to visualization. So now by visualization, like we, we are trying to re, do a bivariate analysis. So let's just sentiment, sentiment and title distributions. So length of title distribution. And so, I mean, just uh, the uh, not links of title, but just uh, the sentiment. So now we can see here uh, around as we as we saw here, uh, we have around forty two thousand neutral sentiment, and we can see here and positive and negative sentiment. And the next is we can just check the distribution of <coughs> the title links, and we can see here title links is around it's just uh around as you can see here around seven thousand the title links and we can see here uh the content links and the sentiment so um, now we're just using matplot so you can actually set the figure size the figure size and now we are using uh, the C ball, so uh, we, are, we are trying to, to scatter plots. So scatter, we are comparing the relationship between content length and sentiment. So, if as we as the content length is growing, what is it like? What is the description of positive sentiments and the neutral and the negative one? We, it will just give us some idea to decide and also sentiment with title links as we used content with sentiment and also here we can just check title links and content links so what's the distribution of the relationship between that so as title links grows uh, what will happen to the content links we can just see that and now we can actually see the distribution of title links yeah and you can see here the title links is around 
this is frequency, the Y is frequency, so around 16,000, uh, around 50, between 55-ish, so we can check by using that. It's just to give you an initial idea, so what to, what to, what to follow through and also what to look for in, in what to do in an ED. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. I hope that was audible enough. Okay, uh, the same situation. I'm not really sure, uh, Abdul Salam. Uh, maybe I'll, can you ask me this question in Slack? And for Henok, what is the difference between collab and base code? So collab will actually uh, collab run on uh, Google's uh, CPUs. So you have some and also somehow data performance. Maybe you, you have a performance PC but Google Colab can offer a free, a free uh, CPU. And also, if something goes wrong, it's just uh, the runtime can be deleted easily. And if it's, for example, if you are running uh, out of memory, the runtime will just, uh, the runtime will actually stops. But if you are using your laptop, your laptop might freeze. So you will you will, you will not have those hiccups. Uh, are we going to write a code in Python for ED analysis? Yeah. So you have to, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, you can use uh, Conda, and also you can you can integrate Colab with GitHub and uh, submit that in, in that way. But uh, that might take time so you won't take time but it's preferred to use your own environment for now but you can set up if you if you manage to set up and link the collab to github that's fine you can use that one because it will it, it is stored in the same way but remember to follow uh, the instructions in the so for example don't store a notebook file not in the, in the scripts folder, don't store a notebook file, and also in the notebooks directory, don't store a, a Python file. So follow the folder structure correctly. And also, if you manage to connect and collab with GitHub, you can, you can do that. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Let me just uh, share some reference materials. I think. Mm -hmm almost most of the important reference materials are shared in the reference section of the challenge document but let me just try to find the other for example it might be useful and find this use this key i'll just drop it in the chat so if you have any issues and if you want to actually dig more and refer more, you can use this and seaboard mostly is for visualization and pandas is to perform uh, yes. okay any other question Okay. Thank you, guys.
Can I cut a meeting? Can you stop the recording? Mm -hmm. Thank you.